One of the greatest storytellers of all time in country music, Tom T. Hall. Oh, in some of my songs, I have casually mentioned the fact that I like to drink beer. Now this little song, it's more to the point. Roll out the barrel and lend me your ears. I like beer. There it is. I want, I want to get this on, on audio. If this is like your last time recording for a while, you, you can like, you can try and try and get, get the quote on this. Shit, bitch! You know what I want? I want to talk to Samson. Fly me to the moon like that bitch Elvis crammed in. Because it's hard being black and gifted. Sometimes I just want to throw it all down and get lifted. <laughs> what the hell is happening here? <laughs> yeah, it's just, and another thing too, I just want to take, you guys to take note. Depends on how long we record there, but I'm shooting to drink uh, six beers tonight. Yes. I say we try to Whoa. get it done in 20 minutes. Ouch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 20 minute yeah, show, this, Kyle. These you are think? typically long shows, so that's it's probably gonna have to be a like one beer every eight minutes, Corey. Mm. We'll see what we'll do. I'm not, I'm not making any promises. But... Wait, okay, well, let, let's see if you've loopholed it. Have you already started? He's six beers in. No, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm one, one or two sips in. What kind of swill do you drink anyway? Let me let me guess. You've got uh, it's Labatt Blue. I haven't drank blue for a while. Actually. Wait, 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 wait. No, James, you want to take a take a crack at it? Hmm. Domestic? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Why does it sound <laughs> like you loopholed that, that answer? Mm. I, was thinking, I was thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, Heineken's domestic when you're in Amsterdam. So yes. Uh, um. Kokini. No, they don't sell that out here anymore. Yeah, oh, you're right. I'm, it's because I'm close to the border. Uh, Keith's. No, close though. Moosehead. Ding, 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 ding. Mm. There you go. Oldest beer in Canada. Domestic. Gross. 1867. Oh, I like Moosehead. Yeah, it's a, it's a decent beer. Dude, that story's crazy. The, 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 that's the, the two brothers. One started McCausland. Uh, um, one started uh, Moosehead, and the other one started Keith's. Like, the, the, the family split with Dad's recipe kind of thing. Uh, bad blood. And, and actually, crazy story. The, the, uh, the, one of the sons who ended up, or great-grandsons or something, who ended up with, as president and owner of Keith's got murdered a couple of years ago by his son with an axe in his office in Texas. What? Yeah, man. You can look it up. <laughs> <laughs> crazy story. But it's like the the, 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 the Hatfields and McCoys, the, those two breweries. My God, murdered with an axe in his office? Yep. Like in 2014 or 15, like, how does that happen in 2015? Wow. Like, so somebody sauntered through the building, with, <laughs> you know, with killing on his mind with an axe in his hand, or did this guy just, like, have this big broad axe in his office? I don't know if he grabbed the fire... Do people still have those in buildings, like fire axes on the wall? I don't know how it happened. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's brutal. L- literally, <laughs> Corey. Yeah. I was going to, like, I don't know. I just feel bad cracking jokes about it, really. Um, no, we're not cracking jokes. Well, now you said the word cracking, so I'm tempted, but we're, we're not cracking jokes. <laughs> we're making jokes. <laughs> oh, Corey, we didn't murder anybody. <laughs> James, remember? Do you remember when back in the day when you were working at Annie's and I think, nope. was it Keith's or Moosehead that was brought in? While I was working there, mm. I think so. I mean, it was it was all during that late nineties haze period that I don't remember very much. I don't of. remember much either. But neither of those two beers were there while I was there. What we did bring in that while I was there was some really bad stuff. We brought in Vieux Montréal while I was there. We brought in um, Boreal, the Russe and the, and the Blonde, which those are okay. I, they're not my favorites, but those are decent. And we brought in about every fruit-flavored concoction that was popular at the time, from Boomerang to Tornado. Remember all that crap? Oh, do you remember those Ugh. things? Oh, my God. Malt-based yeah, sweet. Oh, my God. Yeah, we sold a lot of that stuff, though. 
Oh yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, tor- tornadoes and and boomerangs, mm-hmm. the lemon ones. Holy moly, those things sold like crazy in the summer. I remember those me- were the those are the years of the forty ounce Bull Max. You guys remember the Bull Max? Yeah, man. That was the first <laughs> forty ounce bottle of beer you can ever buy out here. It was like, oh my god, Bull Max, which I've never heard of since because you know every other producer or brewer just did the same thing. Like. Six months later. Yeah, well, I used wow. to mix of those those things into sangria. That was the only thing they were really good for. What a boomerang! Yeah, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, but they—I mean, they—they—they they, they fizzled, right? Like they were—they were around for a few years and then gone. It's like shandies. In fact, like we're due for a shandy uh, surge. Remember twist shandies in the in the like late eighties, and then. Those things really were sort of shandy esque, and like there's always a version of it that pops yep. back. So it, it, it's due. It, it's coming probably. Well, now now it's the Rattler. Yeah, I, I heard recently that uh, the, the kids aren't drinking beer, or not as much as they used to. They're they're on to like they drink a lot more wine. Wine sales are up, and and all the uh, the vodka based stuff is 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 taking the place of beer. Vodka. I would happily drink drink Rattlers. They're refreshing, man. I love them. Yeah, people like the Smirnoff Ice. People like mixing that stuff up too. Red Bulls and etc. Just give me bloody Caesars all day long. <laughs> for, for, for our uh, UK friends, he's not. He doesn't want. He, ang- he's not angrily asking for salads. No, well, I think anybody outside of Canada has no idea what Corey just talked about. Bloody Caesars, a bloody, Caesars, a bloody Mary the with cocktail, Clamato juice, invented in Calgary, Alberta. It is the most epic hangover cocktail of all time. Seriously. It's, it's the bre- breakfast beverage of champions. But th- I, I don't even... Do people even know what Clamato is? Um, cl- I don't think Tomato do. juice. I think that... What's... With the taste that's got clam, clam flavor to it. Clam juice and tomato it. juice. Yeah, it's delicious. It sounds gross, though. Like, to just, to describe <laughs> it sounds disgusting. But it's but so good. If, if you have a... Oh, if you have a, a Bloody Caesar... It's it's and a good a one. Well made. It's like they're well garnished, just like I I would imagine a, a a well made Bloody Mary. But Bloody Caesars, the garnishings get a little out of control at some at some places. From like yeah, some like, try and make it their own too much. Yeah, they, they put things like roast beef sandwiches sometimes on the toothpick. Oh yeah, in, in some places like crazy <laughs> things. It, it's common We're, to see like uh, shrimp or something like that. You know, yeah, big but pickles, for the most part, it's onions. a stick of celery. Yeah, pickles, onions. I actually kind of I like a. Like a bit of vinegar juice, kind of. Someone taught me that trick. Spicy yeah, bean, spicy. buddy. Spicy yeah, beans. Spicy bean. Mm. Exactly. Pickled beans. Yeah. That's the best. Well, anyway, anyway, the best thing I can do is suggest to people just to Google the recipe for a Bloody Caesar or Google images of them. That I think that will help people get over the mental image that Clamato. Ugh, wow, it's, don't even go let, there. Let's just... put the cards on the table here. That is an unappetizing name. Let's just say thank us later. Trust us. Like, mm-hmm. honestly, this drink is. Tabasco, Worcestershire, Worcester, whatever you want to call it. The ri- you got. How do you manage to say miss say that word every week? Uh, <laughs> whatever. I don't need. No one can ever agree what that word really is. That's com- why I like making the joke. <laughs> it comes up way too often, though. It's amazing. You got it in last show too. I, I love Caesars. Okay. <laughs> so uh, sometimes what you get some. Sometimes people put a little, a little dash of horseradish. Oh, I like horseradish in mine more than a dash. And the key to a good Caesar is to shake it after you've don't, a little stir isn't enough. You got to really. I like horseradish in mine. I like uh, celery salt in the mix too, a yeah. little bit, and and a good shake, extra spicy. Mm. Yeah, when I, when I get serious about it, I'll actually put everything into a shaker. Oh yeah, absolutely, must. Like I won't. I won't. Like I might. My, my, really, the only time I have it is when I go to my folks' house because they always seem to have the ingredients. But they don't have a shaker, so I just pour everything into the cup and just stir it around with a stick or a spoon or whatever, and that, that has to do. But otherwise, yeah, I've got this great big stainless steel shaker here. Only way to go. Yep. Agreed. You always get with the, either the... I'm, I'm, I'm good with either the lime or lemon, preferably lemon for this particular drink, with a nice stick of celery. Boom. And you need a straw. I like a nice straw. What? I like the straw because of the rimmer, you know. See, I like to drink the. For me, it's it's a it's a seven drink 
drink because it takes me seven times around the rim to take off all the celery salt, and I like celery Ooh. salt with each sip. So, like that's it seven, depends, seven or eight sips to, to a cocktail because there has to be. I, I, I rotate slightly with every sip and take take the rimmer off with every sip. So that's why I, th- I feel with a straw you can be like super generous with your celery, and then you know you kind of just take a bit or your your celery salt rimmer, excuse me, and then. You know, you take a bit, and then you take your your sip with the straw. Mm. You guys ever had one with like with like a bacon stir stick in it? Not yet. <laughs> it's pretty strong. It sounds good. It sounds good. But I mean, if you have if you have a tall enough one with se- with with celery salt and the bacon stir stick, that is your daily allotment of sodium busted. Oh, for sure. True. Just the clamato, man. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, my God. I'm They're on, just so loaded with salted. I'm, defies logic. I'm on beer, too, guys. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's going to get sloppy, man. Bring it. Shit, bitch. You know what I want. <laughs> you know what that's from yet, James? It sounds like, uh, what's his name? Murphy. Close. It's not? Is it, or is it Dave Chappelle? It's Chappelle from uh, the movie Half-Baked. He plays like three different characters in that movie. <laughs> He's, that sir smokes a lot. I, it, <laughs> I'm a little ashamed that I didn't get it right away, but to be fair, if you've seen Half-Baked, you're not really supposed to remember much. I saw that movie in the theater, man. That was uh, <laughs> why I bought it after the, after the fact. But uh, yeah. Doctor says I need a bucky out of me. Hey, what is the most embarrassing movie that you can think of? I know this you can't really think back all the way, but if you had to think of the most embarrassing movie that you ever paid to see in theater, what would it be? I almost named some really bad movie called like Love Hurt or something, but I won passes and we walked out of it. So I don't I don't take too much responsibility for it. Um the worst movie I ever I'll tell you the the movie I'm most embarrassed for walking out of. Because it turned out to be like literally, Corey, one of my top ten favorite movies of all time, favorite comedies for sure of all time. Uh, but we we walked out of it in theater. I think Tony Bureau walked out with me. The Office. <laughs> the, I'm very interested to hear the this. Office. The Office. Yeah. Wow. The Office. What are you talking about? They made a movie, The Office. Oh, oh sorry. I mean, Office Space. Office Space. Excuse me. Office Space. Oh, wow. You guys are losers. Dude, love it now. Love it. I must have seen that movie a hundred times now. It's one of my favorites. How I can quote you... the whole thing. Yeah, that's it. How could you walk down it? Like, dude, the first time I saw that movie, I fell in love. I think we were hungover. I, I can't explain it. You had, you had like, the mentality of the main the main character in that movie. You're just like, I, I yeah, no, I just can't handle this today. <laughs> Maybe. Now, I have a stack of movie stubs. And they're just out of reach, so I can't pull them out now. But I know that there are some extraordinarily embarrassing movies in there. Hmm. Like I know I saw uh, the Cell with Jennifer Lopez. I saw the Cell. You know the the tra- I remember the tra- the trailer for that, and it actually kind of looked pretty interesting. And I was like, "What is?" I this saw it with M. Well, M and I have been together a long time now. That I think of that, but I saw that movie with M. I remember that was a date movie. <laughs> you know what? To come, to sp- come to think of it, I, I was went to see that movie with uh, Tony Bureau. And he had one pass. That's funny. <laughs> and we stuck it out, man. <laughs> uh, well, I think we'll do that one day. As Corey, do you keep your movie stubs? I'm starting to now. It has. I have as of like the last two years, kind of. I never have. That's not gonna do. Well, whatever. I mean, I've done a lot with my son, right? So keep those. And... Now we can spend a good hour going through my ticket stubs and going, dude, you went to see that? You're so lame. Who, you? Yeah. Why? No, no, if you went through my movie stubs, you would be shocked at the movies I paid money to see. That bad? Really? Oh, there's some that are just... Like, it used to be me and Candace's thing. Like, we're going to the movie tonight. We'd go every week. Him and I used to and go to a lot more movies, for... too. Oh, a yeah. A lot more movies. Back in, my, back in my... From, I'd say, 18 to, like, 22. Or more, more like 18 to 20. I was, like, a... Probably, like, a weekly or maximum bi-weekly movie guy like we just went to go see anything even to the point where you just go because you knew it was kind of gonna be bad well i mean that's what i mean like every i think we, we went on like tuesday wednesday nights 
every week before kids, before real responsibilities, before home ownership. It's it's Tuesday, Wednesday night. We're going to the movie. We'd go out, have dinner, and go have, go watch a movie. And boy, oh boy, there are some bad movies that we paid good money to see. I'm having a hard time thinking of any that I really actually regret. The only one I really kind of regret is, I don't know, it was one with Ashton Kutcher. It was a a love movie. You know, I tagged along with my my girlfriend at the time and one of her friends, which was a really big mistake. Well, yeah, you should have let them go get scratch that itch by themselves. What were you thinking? Well, I think it was one of those things where like we were out and they're like, let's go and I should. I could have. No thanks. Yeah, I could have opted out, but uh, definitely a big mistake. But I don't know. I've been. Dec- I'll tell you a bad experience I had at the movies, and I'm kind of. I was embarrassed to. I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but whatever. I mean, I was like nine years old. I think it was the year. Uh, whatever. When when Tremors came out. I like Tremors. Well, I saw Tremors in eighty eight, eighty nine. Yeah. So whatever. I'm eight years old maybe i saw it in the theater for someone's birthday party and like the last five minutes like the climax like the kid whose birthday it was we we're both just like Bleh! and he was like uh, i gotta go to the bathroom and i was like yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> and we just bailed on the, like we bailed on the climax and we came back in like as soon as we hear the music kind of change we're like we're back just <laughs> watching the movie now <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, geez, we missed the best part. Oh, what a shame. I'm so disappointed. I was really into that scary part. Yeah, I was kind of. We were disappointed after we bailed. It's one of those. It's a regret. But I'll tell you another. Just quickly before we move on to something else, me and Kyle one time, our aunt and uncle they used to. They were such cool people. Well, they still are. They're such cool people. They were all young and super hip back in the day, and uh, they took us to a movie. And we wanted to go see Universal Soldier. I don't know if I told you this story. But uh, anyhow, it was sold out. So we ended up buying four tickets to go see the movie House Sitter with uh, Steve Martin and Goldie Hawn. Okay. And my, my uncle would get in the theater and I can hear him kind of like talking with my aunt. And he's like, no, we're not going to see that. So like he, we walk into Universal Soldier and the guy looks at the tickets and it's, it's like this young kid. And he's like. Yeah, like whatever. My, my you can't go in this theater, <laughs> sir. Exactly. And my, my uncle like greased him, man. He gave him money. He gave him like ten or twenty bucks or something. And nice. then you know, we're in there, we're waiting, and anyway, yeah, we got we got we got dragged out, kind of. Like they busted us. Like they they came to and it came to a point where people were missing their seats, you know, and you know they had to go through the started having to go through the theater asking for tickets and like. My, we're like the jig is up, you know. We know they know it's us, you know. And anyway, we, we gave in. My uncle, he went to the kid that you know, like pointed us out and said, "Oh, it's them," you know. He was like, "Yeah, you got my money," like right in front of his manager, you know. Really, eh? Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. And yeah. Anyway, we we saw House Sitter, so that was kind of memorable. I don't. I mean, I re- I specifically remember Uncle Mike greasing the the the. Whatever that, what do you, what's the name of the, somebody who works in a movie theater? Usher. Usher. The Usher? They don't okay. have that anymore. I specifically remember that, but I do not recall going to see that movie, House Sitter. Yeah, I, I remember. I definitely remember. You're such a weird, weirdo like that. I don't know how I remember weird things like that. Have you guys ever tried Death Rain chips? Nope. Blair's Death Rain chips. Oh, yes, I have. You didn't say Blair's. They are the best. Yeah, they're good. Death Rain does sound oh. kind of sound good. They're not that hot, Corey. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm, I'm not just <laughs> saying that. My brother was like, James. you can't eat these. And I like, I munched down a bag. He's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, these are good, but they're not that hot. Well, it depends. They have, they have different flavors. Some of them yeah, he got me the, he, are not that he hot. He got me the ones. The ones that come like, they, they sell the them in was. like the tiny little bags with like, three chips worth well, they, and i'm like that's they, they, stupid they, give me a real bag of these things they do have real size yeah um, but you got a special order of them they like he couldn't find that in his store. He, my brother was like certain because he knows i like hot stuff he's like I, I tried these chips you can't eat more than one i was like all right man and i'm not saying that they're not hot they are like the hottest chips i've ever put in my mouth but like you can eat a bag 
that's that's the thing when I, I find with stuff like again touching back on the Caesar stuff like that like I like them spicy you know so I do like a spicy chip and you know once you dig into something like that it's like your your threshold at a point it just kind of you've reached like an equilibrium where okay your your mouth's not exactly getting more, any more hot and you're just with hot things I find you it's one of those things where like you're kind of like eating a lot <laughs> like you're cramming it in your face almost you know yeah you get a good sweat on i like it yeah me too i just don't like it the next day but yeah <laughs> <laughs> my stomach is not what it used to be and that's no i'm learning that too i'm really sad about that me too like that's a real sign of age man because i used to be able to do whatever the fuck i wanted man like you know, I eat. you weren't sure if you could swear there. Yeah, right? I liked him. Did you yeah, did you hear him realize had... we were doing Sith disturbers? He's like, <laughs> yeah, it was the weakest, <laughs> the weakest brake pumping I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So I used to be able to eat like you know three burgers and like pass out in my burgers on my couch when I was a bachelor and just like wake up top shape and like yeah, not anymore. Top shape. That is such a Quebecois saying. Top shape. Top out neck. Let's go. Yeah, anyway, uh, Blair's Death Rain doesn't sponsor us, but folks, if you find the black bag, the habanero... Get it. Get it. Say your prayers, man. I used to take the, those things around and, like, prank people. You drop up one of those into a bag of Doritos, man, someone's going to die. Well, that's that's exactly what I did. Like we had, we, It was o, the 04 World Series where the Red Sox finally won, and we had a bunch of people over, and these people find ketchup spicy. And so we, we had like barbecue chips. You're a mean man. And the, oh, he was the the most hilarious thing I've almost ever witnessed in my life. And we just mixed in. This is again, this is Tony, myself, when we had our apartment. We mixed in these habanero chips in with regular, plain old, uh, barbecue chips. <laughs> and they, you know, if you were lucky, you'd get a plain or regular barbecue. But then you would see like they, these guys would try. And they'd get nailed with the habanero chip. And they were, and they must be they were crying. suffering. Oh. Oh, dude, like, if, if Me it and really... Tony are just, like, weeping. We're laughing so much. Like, oh, there's something wrong with these chips. They're too spicy. They, they, had, they must have screwed something up. And we're just like, yep, too bad. And we would just keep, him and I would just keep eating them because we could deal with it. But, man, it was so funny. Well, at least... I used, to, I used to also take them to... I, I also used to take them to the softball diamond when when I was coaching ladies softball, and I would you know they'd see me eating chips, they say oh what kind of chips are those? Habanero? Are they spicy? Eh, you want one? Okay, and they would try one, and most of them, a few of them could deal, but most were not pleased. No, for sure. <laughs> I nailed so many people with that. I kept a bottle of Dave's Insanity Sauce behind the counter at uh, at Annie's, and I remember once <laughs> Tony Bureau was there. And uh, <laughs> this is like the fifth time we've mentioned Tony. <laughs> and uh, this guy asks for an extra spicy Caesar, and Tony's like, "Do it, do it, put that, put Dave's in." I'm like, "No, man, I can't, I can't do that to a customer, you know." So he's like, "Do it, do it." So I'm like, "All right, I'll compromise." So I call the guy over. I'm like, "Look, you asked for a spicy Caesar. I have this stuff that's like really spicy." And this guy was like really arrogant. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, that's what I said, really spicy." I'm like, "No, no." I'm like, "Do you want to read the bottle? It's like this crazy sauce that's like." He's like, "Yeah." Like interrupts like, me, like sign, sign this paper here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I'm like, okay, fine, you got it. So I, I mix some in, and dude, it, it knocked him off his feet. That Dave's insanity is 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 a uh, pretty potent. I would say, you know, for your average spicy person eater, that's that's enough to to make you tap out. We, we gotta get it. We should get a picture of us three one time. Maybe even Carlos too. Get something. I think Carlos likes to get his spice on as well. Yeah, for sure. I made him some jalapeno jelly last Christmas. Get a picture of us four, you know, after having eaten something super spicy with our sweat on, you know. I dude, got, I get, I get beat red. Like I've got video of me eating the uh, the suicide, the nine one one or whatever they call them, the Rim Re- Reaper rings at, wings at uh, at McKibbins. And the video of me, like I'm sweating pretty good, but there's video of my buddy who did it with me. This guy Chris, shout out Chris. It looks like that guy just got out of a pool with his clothes on, man. He yep. <laughs> is soaked. He's 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 dr- he's drenched. He's just dying. It's awesome. Well, be prepared. That's it. We're t- I'm taking notes here. Change of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Gentlemen, around beer number three. Nice. Wow. Plowing ahead. Yeah. All right, I've, I've got a would you rather for you guys. Shoot. Hopefully I haven't asked this one before. But would you rather learn that ghosts were real or aliens were real? Oh, wow, that's a good question. Would I rather learn? Uh, and I mean, when I mean aliens, I mean intelligent life, not just some little bacteria on some far-flung planet that but they, hitched a ride. Like, are they going to come here one day? Like are, that they're real in the universe, or that they're real and like they come here sometimes and like they built the pyramids and shit. Mm, well, I mean, if the ghosts are here, then the aliens ought to be here too. Then I'll go with. I like that loophole where you can have both answers. <laughs> oh, I didn't. No one said that. There's no nobody <laughs> said that. Corey, slow slow down with the beers. Um, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say right right off the bat for sure, like ghosts. Like I want to know there's aliens, but at the same right, I have to strongly believe that there are somewhere out there. When you put that mathematical equation together, where it shows the number of galaxies. The number of planets, you know, the number of planets, potential M class planets in the Goldilocks zone. I would think there's, you know, I believe much more strongly than in it than that. And then to know that there, you know, ghosts exist, you at least know that our lives, you have verification that our lives are, you know, there's something after this life. Like, hey, who says everybody turns into a ghost? Maybe it's like a. Maybe it's like force ghosts. Maybe it's like only the very best humans, Corey. That'll be a super force ghost. <laughs> super farce ghost. <laughs> I'm a tough one though, right? Uh, I'm gonna say aliens too, because I don't really want. I don't really want to. Uh, ghost. That's like brings too much what? weirdness into the, the universe. See, aliens existing is like fits into science and fits into everything that like fits into all my boxes. Like I'm, I'd be surprised that they've been visiting and like tinfoil hats have been right about that. See, but that's, but it still fits you're into all my science. They, you're saying they're visiting. That's like, you're, you're kind of cramming that in there. Well, well yeah, cause he, cause, cause, you have to, you have to cause ghosts, like it's level not, the not, playing not field. The, you know, he's not saying angels in heaven or, or aliens in the universe. He's saying like among us. I thought at least that's how I took it. Yeah. No, among us. Okay. Like you, you could, you, your daily life could be affected by one or the other. And in any way, I, I, it could be really cool or it could be nightmarish. Like, okay. So here's, here's, okay. Here's how I would think about the question. Would you if if you're you're with your lady, and it's sexy times, would you rather having a ghost watch you or an alien? Oh, what kind of alien? <laughs> a ghost person or a ghost animal? Yeah, like what if it's like uh, you know, you, uh, an What's, old relative? That, oh, that's like oh, oh, that's why a no, relative. No, why don't you do like, that, Nana? That's Uncle a, Bill. Get out of here! Get out of here! That's a or totally like, different question. Little, little green man, dude, 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 dude little green man, you get, get out of here. Oh, dude, I'm totally getting freaky, man, with some aliens. Watching. <laughs> wow, no, bring it bring it on, alien, whatever. Wow. Yeah. Jesus, that escalated quickly. My God. Corey. <laughs> He's only two beers in. Hey, I'm You three, did not three. have to offer up that info. Hey, you didn't have to ask that weird question, man. Uh it is a weird question, but it's it's I think it's a valid way to evaluate uh which one you'd Truly prefer to have around. It's not about having around. For me, it's about the the verification of something. You know, like again, like I already believe that there is life, not necessarily visiting our Earth, but life somewhere else out there in the galaxy. You know, and you know to again know that there's there's life after death is that would be a pretty cool confirmation for me, at least at home. But again, a hard question. All right. Well, there you go. Now you do something. All right, what do you guys want? You want some uh, trivia and facts, or I've got a little trilogy thing here. You guys want to hear that? Trivia, trivia, trivia. Trivia, all right. Let's set it off nice and slow. Do you guys know what the original name for A New Hope was? Mm, Star Wars? You mean it wasn't just Star Wars? No. 
Oh, I've heard this recently. I, I where did I see this in a meme? It's long, right? Kind of long, not that that long. But, but it's longer than A New Hope. It's like seven it's, words or something. Yeah, it's like the. Yeah. Ah, I'm not gonna remember, but I did see it like recently. The, the Adventures of Luke Starkiller or something. Yeah, like that's that. it. That's it. Got it. Go. Got it, guys. You did it. Did it. Hmm. Um. All was, right. Like, was Journals of the Will also part of that title? Not that I read. Anyhow, I found a new little uh, cachet of some some facts there because, like I said before, for the show, I'm kind of digging the bottom of the barrel here. With the uh, we've been doing this for a while and. To get some stuff that anyhow, like, kind of interesting or at least things that aren't, like, so mundane and things that you might already know, you know? So, th- these are things that, you know, sometimes, for the most part, you guys know a lot of them, but some of them are, have been pretty interesting. Hey, just for the record, I think, you know, as far as Star Wars podcasts go, I think we may possibly have set a record for the longest a, a Star Wars podcast has gone without mentioning Star Wars. Like, we did, like, a half hour. Nice. Without talking Star Wars whatsoever. Yeah, you're lucky. It's yeah, yes. James. It's, it's James. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Corey, neither Sorry, of your first two this? questions had anything to do with Star Wars, I just want to point out. <laughs> <laughs> James, I'm going to direct this one a little more toward you, because I think Kyle might know this from having read the comics, which is a bit of a hint. But, you know, at the end of A New Hope, Vader's like, oh, like, ooh, this 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 kid that was in the trench he he was powerful in the force like who is this kid uh gotta find me this out it's not like he knew right off the bat that it was luke skywalker so who informs lord vader that you know it is indeed a skywalker that was flying that x-wing could i know this if i didn't read the comics uh getting an educated guess basically yeah this would have to be a uh, a good guess I mean, it's it's it seems like it's low hanging fruit. It seems like an obvious answer. So yeah, just take a stab at it. Mm. I really, I I don't even. I, I who 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 who's like, you know, Kyle? You know this? Like this was easy for you? Yeah, no, it's it's one of the, one of the bigger moments in the new Star Wars series. Who oh, I see. who who doesn't? Uh, who doesn't let Lord Vader down an empire? Like who? Who's a good, resourceful man that has some probably interesting tidbits of information? For Vader, I, I don't know. That's a, that's a very good hint. Um, <laughs> trying to keep it a little vague. Uh, all right. He's a man of few words. Boba Fett. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good clue. But uh, ah, okay. I, I didn't know that, but uh, I guess I could have taken it. I wouldn't have gone there without that clue. I, my, my mind wasn't anywhere near there. All right. Well, I, I, I guess from an, it like makes sense from you know like an Intel standpoint. Like, yeah, look, it makes sense. He's the man. Hey, boop, he hired boop. him to go get some info. Yeah, and he does. Okay, so here's an interesting one. I never knew this, but did you guys know Vader has uh, something etched into his chess piece? I did not. Oh, I know. You're right. I know. I know. Isn't there some Orabesh in there? It's Hebrew, actually, ancient Hebrew. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, so some ancient Hebrew etched into his chest, and it reads. His deeds will not be forgiven until he merits. Pretty interesting, I, th- I thought. Yeah, I like that. That's a good piece, Corey. That's well done, sir. That's a little nugget. You're informing the world. Well, maybe not every listener. In fact, if you knew that, let Corey know. I, I, I would want to know if anybody knew that off the top of their head. I, that, that, that's, that'd be a... A point in the uh, tumbling saber bank, if you know that the Sith disturber bank. Like, is that is that the um? Like there's there's, I, there's some like chicken scratch beneath the buttons on his chest plate. Is that where it is? I don't know. I didn't see a picture or anything, but I like basically when I'm doing these searches for facts and trivia and whatnot, I saw like a uh, forty trivia things today that 
a lot of them are always double ups, but this one was actually published in 2017, uh, May of 2017. So it was a little fresh. The first time I've seen it, but uh, again, no pictures. So I, I can't exactly say exactly where it is, but supposedly that is the case. Hmm. That's, that's interesting. I always thought it would have been like, you know, this is the on, this is the off. This turns the AC on and off, you know? <laughs> This one calls your your parents to pick you up. <laughs> Slightly off topic, but you you know we do our our big golf tournament, the Golden Beagle thing, and maybe you've seen a picture of the trophy. Uh, it's like a a beagle on a piece of wood, and it's got like every year we put the winning team on it, and we go all the way around. Anyway, to make a long story short, too late. Um, we've had to turn the corner and like start going around the trophy, so it'll be a three hundred and sixty degree trophy. And so I, I wanted to adorn it all the way around, um, which which it wasn't. Like, it was only sort of a one-sided trophy to this point. And so I had some Latin put on it, the uh, <laughs> the front and the back. Um, on the front, it, say? we, it says, postia sibum, or P-O-S-T-E-A, and then C-I-B-U-M. And on the back, it says, poops, poopus Exitus. <laughs> <laughs> Food goes in. Poop comes out. <laughs> That's so random. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought the P U P P I S puppis exiat e e x e a t. Yeah, I, I'm gonna tell people it says when they ask me what it says in Latin if they don't figure it out because the the, the poopis part you might be able to figure out if you knew. But I'm going to tell people it says, uh, um, plan, learn from the past, plan from the, for the future. I'm going to tell them that's what it says. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Because, yeah, Poopus Exia does kind of, you know, if you know French, we do, kind of brings true a bit. Yeah, it's, you can figure that out. Yeah. All right, so, so what, one, last, one last little bit of trivia here for you guys. This one's actually pretty interesting. Again, I saved this one for last. Because this one can disrupt fandom in a way. I almost want to test this for myself at a point, but I'm just not at that level. And you know how we've always said that, uh, what is it, Pablo Hidalgo or someone had said that the plot of the story is what the basis for your time or traveling time is, kind of, in a, in a hyperspace travel. Well, however long it takes to get there is the... It's the, the what?! The speed of plot. The speed of plot. Yeah, correct. Sorry. So, that being the case, I actually saw a fact on this thing. Now, again, it's, it's a website. I'm not sure if this is all 100% true, but it said a statistic about the Falcon being the fastest ship in the, the galaxy. And the Falcon can fly 25,000 light years per day. So... If you really wanted, now that there's all this expanded novels and these atlases and stuff like that, you can kind of say, like, super uber fans or, I don't know, you know, like, people, if they really wanted to, can say, like, well, this doesn't make sense because, you know, it's a three-day journey and he got there in an hour or whatever, you know. So there is some kind of basis there for some science in the traveling time within the Star Wars universe, knowing but, that... But Pablo said that in response to the question, like, he was being asked, like, how fast does this thing travel or how far are these distances? He says, it doesn't matter. He said, there is no yeah, number. They, they, they don't pay attention to that Because at all. it doesn't matter. It no. takes as long as we need it to take to tell the story. If, if And I agree with you guys. I'm 100% on that page. Like I said, I don't think I would ever delve that deep into a story to say, like, nope. It doesn't work. He, uh, it's too far away or whatever. But uh, I was, I thought it was kind of interesting that it's actually quantified and that you can, if you wanted to, you know, it'd be pretty cool if they actually did kind of take that into consideration. But you can kind of plot a chart if you want, Kyle. I bought you, uh, I doubt you ever even used it, but I bought Kyle and his kids this awesome, like, Death Star thing, James. That's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's quite, it's a little big. We do, we do use it, actually. Really cool. It's like um. It's not canon though, so I I, I pay no oh, attention no to way. it. Really? <laughs> That's got all kinds of planets that aren't in the air quote new canon. Really? That's that's lame. But it also has has our star systems as well, right? Like Earth's. 
Yeah, but who cares about those planets? <laughs> Boring. Anyway, James, it's it's a projector. It's the Death Star projector that projects onto the ceiling the, the galaxy of Star Wars or or our galaxy. Oh, that's cool. Which is lame. No, it's lame. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I, I wasn't paying attention all that much. Like, is is there like a moral to this story? A point? What do you mean? Ah, never mind. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, the whole thing, the Falcon, like, I just thought it was interesting that I'd never really heard about it prior that, you know, there is a quantification to its... Yeah, but who quantified it? Like you said, it's just like, that's that website's opinion, maybe. Like, I, that doesn't come from, there's nothing in any movie that ever says a speed. Well, I'd like, I'd, maybe it comes I'd like from a comic a or something. It's true. I'd like to see where they, they got their information, but just to see if it put on paper like that, I was like, hmm. I'm surprised people don't jump all over that. I'm surprised that to hear that it's the fastest ship in the galaxy. Really? What? what you don't believe Han Solo when he says it? No. I think he. Just, I think he just <laughs> when he air quotes makes a name for himself, uh, possibly within the Kessel Run. Whatever he does, he just the Kessel Run makes the in twelve point one parsecs, right? So it's like. I don't know. It's it's. I think it's a renowned thing that kind of makes its way around the galaxy, word of mouth style. That no one can do that, but no, he did it with this ship. So that hence it's known as the fastest ship, kind of. Well, Lando echoes it too. It's the she's the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. All right, fine, but I, it you know with millions and millions and millions of ships out there, that's the fastest one. Why? Yeah, I thought it was sort it's of a rhetorical like question. hyperbole when they would say that. I, I didn't actually think it was like the fastest ship. I guess some, one ship has to be. I suppose so. May as well be that old clunker. I, I got another little question for you guys. In the uh, the trilogy vein, no, James, that was your little, that was your baby, the trilogy game. But, uh, okay, we're going to exclude any and all Star Wars characters. And what are three of your favorite protagonists of all time? Well, you guys mull that over a bit. And I had time to think about it, so I'm just going to say right off the bat, I had, I thought Indiana Jones, a given. Uh, Marty McFly, huge, right up there. The last was kind of a, a toss-up between Ferris Bueller, uh, John McClane, and Martin Riggs. And I, I went with Martin Riggs. Wow. So two Martys and Good one, uh, one in You've, Vienna. You did have time because, man, I, I, I agree with all of your choices. Yeah, just childhood heroes. Like, looking back in the day, you know, like, I watched those movies as a kid, a young, young person, like Lethal Weapon, The Works, and... You know, you see, I, I went with Marty Riggs because, you know, he's a dog guy. He's like, got a real soft heart by the end of it all, you know, and he's super, super badass. Like, if him and McLean got in a fight, it would last quite a while. Before John killed him. Probably. Because he's invincible. Unbreakable, sorry. No, that's not John McLean. That's a different guy. Well, the same guy, <laughs> but different guy. <laughs> Something like that. Well, those guys better pray they don't get clubbed by Captain Kirk's two-handed fist. You're right about that. John well, McClane versus clubbed. Captain Kirk would be the, the, uh, an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. I think Riggs just calls up Chuck Norris. Man, that's a really tough question, Corey. Favorite I, I protagonist. Think, I think you can double up. You don't have to get all original on me. I know we... Really well, Indiana Jones is going to be on everybody's list. Childhood. Yeah. Childhood. Yeah, Indy, Marty McFly for sure. Or Man, I, I can't. I, uh, well, I was thinking about that. Like, I like Venkman, but I also like uh, Stance. Ray Stance. Yeah. I like all four of the Ghostbusters. And I even like all four of the new Ghostbusters. Hmm. Ferris Bueller, too, even though he's kind of like a anti hero. <laughs> Mikey Walsh, Goonies. Yeah, yeah. Let's go, let's there's, a, there's a cockeyed optimist for you. Uh, 
on the Sean Aston vein, Samwise. Yeah, but I mean that that's not so much childhood. But, but no, it's true. I didn't post a question like that. I said three, three years. Yeah, it's true. Go for it. I was kind of in my head. I, I should have asked it like that. But three, three people from your childhood, kind of that. Uh, well, then on this list has to for me has to be Kevin Arnold right at the top. He was like, oh, there. That, that's a good call. Oh my god. I guess he was a hero. He was my hero. Did he French Winnie Cooper in the opening episode, dude? Mole, 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 mole. <laughs> He's awesome. He's on this new show that's fantastic. If you guys haven't checked out uh, Friends from College yet, man, check that out. It's hilarious. I think I'm going to put uh, Optimus Prime and Duke in there as well. Oh, Optimus Prime's there for sure. Hey, I like those choices. For me, I'm more of a Scarlett O'Hara kind of guy, but... I, I don't know if you caught this, James, just before you guys go on there, but um, I tweeted Kyle today because I saw someone else tweet out. Actually, I think it was Jeremy Conrad the at Manabite. He he tweeted something about it being the 31 or the I think it's the 31st anniversary that Transformers, the movie, came out. And it was a scene where it was just a, um, a gif or a gif, whatever you want to call it, of Megatron saying, die, Optimus Prime, die. And he's like, he blasts him like three times, you know. You know, it's funny. And, you try to do impressions all the time. And I don't think you were trying that very hard there. But that was like the best impression you've done. That was, that was, a pretty, <laughs> that was pretty good. Nice. That was a decent Megatron. It, it was awesome, though. Like, But uh, me and Kyle, I remember Kyle and I just freaking out when that happened and then you see optimus dies in the next scene he turns all like gray and brown and he just well, yeah, he's, no he's on, he's on the operating table and, and he, he uh, gives Perceptor's the matrix working of... on him and says oh the wounds are fatal the wounds i'll never are forget fatal. this and i'm like what do you no 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 no. what does that mean fatal we, you, you gotta fix him he's not gonna die and then sure enough you know he gives up the matrix and then he dies like the lights just go out man and he turns gray. The head falls to the side. I'm like, I want to go home. Are you kidding me? Are yeah. you, like, we weren't in a theater. We, we, we were at home. Yeah, we were in our basement, in our unfinished basement. And you knew it was grave injuries, man. Like, he had that that shard of ship in the side of him. And then he got shot all those times. And, like, you just saw his innards and whatnot. And then he passed on the matrix of life or whatever. Oh, no, that that was like, yeah, we talked about it before. Like that that moment, we were upset. We were very upset. Oh, very upset. Really upset. Like Darth Vader revealing that he's Luke's father. That moment has nothing on Optimus dying. Nothing. I that cried. Part of our childhood uh, that was taken away from us there. Well, a loss of innocence. Like, how could the world be so cruel? How can they take Optimus from us? That's our generation's intro- old yeller, guys. <laughs> Yeah, just to introduce a whole new line of toys with it was Hot Rod that turned into Rodimus Prime. Oh, I I didn't like well, that. that. That's what it was all about, right? Like the toys came around before the show. Like the show didn't come up, and then they made toys. Like they had toys to sell, so they built a show around. I saw this the, the, that exact thing up from uh, some little fifteen slideshow thing on the internet today. The worst He Man toys of all time, and yeah, it was exactly that. All these Mattel toys that came out. Like some of them came out after, like before the. Uh, they, the toys were out, but the show had ended, so some of them never even aired. Um, but yeah, they had this. Man, there were some bad toys. I'd forgotten about some of them. Moss Man? Remember Moss Man? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He smelled like. I we had him. He was pine scented. We had him. Dude, no, he, I think he was sprayed with. You ever hear that cologne or that eau de toilette, the patchouli, the one the hippies wear? <laughs> patchouli oil. <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. I, no, he did stink. He was pine scented. Mm, mine was patchouli scented. No, he it, he it, definitely stank. Did he stink as much as as uh, Stinkor? We had him too. But it was I remember uh, Mossman was one of those things that it, like triple uh, triggers one of those uh, sensory memories. You know what I mean? Like whenever I smell someone wearing patchouli, it's like I'm like boom, Mossman. <laughs> yeah, there's Hordak. He's another. Well, he was he was not. He was pretty bad. He was the bad guy from he was Shira, no? Sin. Yeah, he was the main villain from Shira. 
But we for some reason we had him. For some reason. <laughs> It's true. Back then, it wasn't guys didn't collect the Shira toys really, eh? It was a different world, a different world. I tell you. Oh, we had a, we had a cousin like Shira though, and I think there was a crossover once too. I think they got married or something though. I saw there's a there was definitely some crossover episodes. I remember there was like a Christmas one for sure. No, they were they were related. They couldn't be married. I didn't say married. C- Corey said the kissing cousins thing. I'm pretty sure they <laughs> yeah. they were kissing cousins. I'm. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they weren't. Oh God, I don't know. Then again, Leia and Luke. It was the '80s. Yeah, they they would be following the trend of the '80s. That's for sure. So what did you guys say? Anyway, touching. Wait, sorry. About? I have one more protagonist. I'm throwing into my yeah. Mix. yeah I want to hear this. Dis- despite it not being part of my childhood, Samurai Jack. Oh, I love the Samurai Jack. Big fan. Yeah. Poor Jack. Have you watched uh, the new series? Not yet. I'm, Me either, not I'm yet, really but I am. I heard it's a lot darker and... Yeah. And I've got the whole thing on my PVR. It's good though, right? I, have you built up to I it haven't watched it yet. I'm going to binge it uh, hopefully soon. Like, are, are you going to watch like the last season prior to watching this? Or are you just going to jump right in? I don't know. I don't even know where to find the previous seasons. The movie is awesome. You have the movie, I think, eh? Yeah, that thing's hard to find. Dude, that it's movie is... a bit of a collectible is... if you go on eBay. It's a good movie. It's pretty, it's in, it's pretty insane. All right, what else we got? Um... All right, I've, I've got a poll. I mean, we're, we're getting close to the end here, I think. But I've got a poll to run past you guys. So what what will be and I'm I'm very curious to hear what people listening would think. Uh and I'm going to run this on Twitter at some point. So the most annoying thing to come out of the sequel trilogy. Which of these four options would piss you off the most? So Raylo, i.e. Ray and Kylo getting together. Snoke actually turning out to be Plagueis. No lightsaber for Luke at all at any point in 8 or 9. Or, option 4, we revisit the Chosen One prophecy. Oh, you're right. I'm glad you saved that on the air. That groan was legit. <laughs> Ugh. No, okay, that one That one's just jumped right to the top of my list, I think. No, not for me. Like, there, There's nothing for me that can justify Raylo. Just... No. I want to see Raylo. Is... I'm going to get a Raylo shirt made. I'm going to get one made for Corey, too. <laughs> oh. Jesus. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> like, honestly, that that would have... It would honestly upset me the most. Like, I, I don't want to see that whatsoever. They're not going to do that in no Star Wars again, because they're brother and sister anyway, so that can't happen. I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can order this for you guys from... from least annoying for me to most so least annoying of these options would be uh snoke turning out to be plagueis because although yes that would mean they that pablo lied to us numerous times uh, i think it still could be a cool story and a lot of people would be happy about it and uh, you know the linkages back to the prequel era yada 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 uh i'd still be annoyed but it's the least of evils uh, after that is no lightsaber for Luke. I, I desperately want to see him ignite blue or green, either one. But I, I think there's a version of the movie that could be made where even if he doesn't have a lightsaber, I might enjoy it. And then Raylo. That would now we're getting into like pretty rarefied air. This that would piss me off something fierce. But most of all going back to the chosen one rehashing that ugh, that would put me right off the ledge so that would probably bother me the least ugh. no no the chosen well chosen one yes but ch- changing the prophecy a bit or reinterpreting the prophecy and what it had meant like i don't I'm even okay want to hear it. the word prophecy in eight or nine i don't, don't think it's gonna happen it. i don't think it's gonna happen to be honest like there's 
they're just not going to go down that route. It's it's a new, from what I'm gathering now more and more, which I kind of, I get it if you want to move the story forward, but I was kind of hoping that all the movies can be seen more as a cohesive unit telling one story, but it looks like 7, 8, 9 are like a springboard to new films, which a little disappointing for me. Like I said, I wanted to see a whole Skywalker thing, but it looks like these characters are background characters slowly being written out, and they're going to move forward with this whole new story that kind of doesn't necessarily have anything to do with Anakin's. It does, but it doesn't as much as I'd like it to anyhow. All right. That's another conversation for another time. James, you had a minute to think about it. You got how, how do you order these? Uh, most annoying, uh, definitely. I would be most annoyed with the prophecy being revisited. The chosen, a boy. chosen one being re- revisited. That that would hurt me the most. I, I I just have no interest. They tied it up. I like the, I like the bow that was put on it. It's perfect. Um, frankly, I want to see Raylo. Like I'm on board. Like get it on already. You know. So that one's Gosh. not even on the list. Um, I don't even know you anymore. <laughs> but uh, the other two, I guess, are tied, really, for like a distant second to revisiting the prophecy. So Snoke being Plagueis, you, you're ambivalent for, towards? I even think that, that wouldn't... Yeah, I'm ambivalent or even I could... That's one of the theories that I heard as we were going along that I was like, okay, that's not terrible. And Luke with no lightsaber. Like, that that one must piss you off a little bit. <sighs> yeah, but you, now, yeah. you said something in the last one, last time we talked about this, and I was like, ah, like, we didn't really see him at all in the first movie. We may only get introduced to, to like, depressed, shitty Luke in this movie. So if we only get him lighting up in movie three, I won't love it, but I it won't kill me, and it's no, possible. He, he's saying, Kyle said eight or nine. Yeah, I know, but I... Oh, for lighting it up? Yeah. If it doesn't light it up at all, then yeah, then I'm pissed. Yeah, that that's pretty much right at the top of my list, I would think. The Snoke Plagueis thing, again, is a little... He underhand. has to light it up in nine. I could I could deal. I didn't think I'd be able to. I really want to see it in eight. But you sort of swayed me into into being able to deal with it not being in eight. But man, if, it, if he never lights it up... Pfft. That would be lame. That would be bad. That would, yeah. We yeah I I really want to see it in eight. We've waited long enough. Make it happen in eight. I don't care which lightsaber he uses. Okay, who's got uh, who's got something else, or is it is it game over? Let's finish it up. You guys want to do uh, one quick round of Star Wars? Yeah, man. All right. Uh, who's hitting up the isolation booth first? I'll do I'll it. I'll go in the isolation okay. booth. You go. All right, James, oh, it's me and you. You all ready for this? Uh, so anyone who hasn't uh, heard this before, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rattle off five words, Star Wars related, and the first things, whatever it may be, that come to either James or Kyle's mind, they're just going to tell, they're just going to spit it out as quickly as they can. You know, it's, uh, it's just like that. It's super simple. All right, so James, here we go. Kyber crystal. Lightsaber. Planet. Krypton. Hyperspace. Millennium Falcon. Porg. Chop. Balance. <laughs> Beam. All right. Let's uh, see if Kyle... I, I did this last week. Kyle, are you there? I like my answers. I like, I like them too. Krypton sort of surprised me. I don't know where that came from. We weren't talking about we, planet that- we weren't talking about <laughs> Superman at all tonight. You're thinking you just your brain went fiction and then I guess. All right, sent him a message. All right, I'm back. All right, all right you ready for this? Yes, sir. All right. So first word: kyber crystal. Mini chlorine. Planet. Earth. Hyperspace. Wow, warp speed. Porg. 
cute. Balance. Beam. <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay, he has a one for one. One for one. We got beam. You got beam. All right. Finish strong. I I, I could have gone midichlorian for uh, for kyber crystal too. And if if I would have been playing match game, I would have guessed that you would have said midichlorian. For planet, I thought you guys would have said Tatooine. No, we both said the planet we're from. So we went we went two for five. Uh, no, I no, said James, Krypton. James, James, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we done here? I'm done with you, you guys. How many beers? Just, I only made it. To, I'm about to open my fifth, man. All right, so we got to talk side. about something else. <laughs> hey, would you, would you guys rather be like okay at everything and really good at nothing or really good, like really good world class at one thing but really bad at everything else? <laughs> Do I get to choose what that one thing is? Yep. I would be really like world class at. Oh geez, hold on. How, <laughs> define bad. <laughs> Awful, like, like catastrophic. Catastrophic. Like I can't toast my. I can't. You make toast. You can't. You, you're ter- You toast is like a stretch for you at cooking because you're te- so bad at it. Oh man! So like choosing my own clothes in the morning, someone's got to do it for me because I will look ridiculous. You're basically like like. Forrest Gump at ping pong, but also Forrest Gump at, um, well, actually, he was really good at a lot of things. But idiot savant style, I, 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 you know, you're you're just really, really good at one thing, but really terrible at everything else. I don't know. There's two ways of looking at it. Like, I think the if you're really good at one thing, you can kind of make a lot of money off it. Mike Tyson. Yeah, like you just you know you rake it in, you live a good life. And the other thing, you know, you just, uh, you're okay at everything. So. But if you're a bad driver, you're kind of not going to enjoy <laughs> that money. <laughs> you need to hire a driver for sure. You have to hire a driver. Like you'd have to hire a chef, a driver, a landscaper. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that you need to do. Like, can I at least wash myself? A bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. You're not like, you're not going to. <laughs> yeah, dude, you just said you're okay at everything. Like. Or, like, not good at anything. Like, you can't play volleyball or baseball. It's not like you can't feed yourself or wash yourself. <laughs> yeah, you can feed yourself and wash yourself. But, like, you're really you're really <laughs> bad at, at, at sports for sure. And, like, you're a bad driver. You're the worst driver every, all of your friends know. You're the worst at everything except for that one thing, like guitar. Or... Yeah, that's, that's when you laugh with your friends. Be, you're like, <laughs> I don't have to drive because... <laughs> I have this guy driving me around, and I'm like doing whatever I want. Yeah, back but here Corey, are you gonna home. are you gonna have someone having sex for you? Because you're just awful at that too. Mm. Whoa! Well, he's, that, that's where he, that's where his alien friend steps in and fills the void. No, I think every every, every couple of days I may watch, you know, but <laughs> for the most part, for the most part, I'm a participant. How would you live with yourself knowing that your lady's just not happy with you? Which one? Which lady? <laughs> <laughs> How's that different than now? Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> That's true, though. I think that could be said for all three of us. How the hell do you know? Hey, come on. <laughs> I talk with you guys. I often. talk with you guys. Five. Um, so what's the choice? Really good at one thing, Corey? Uh, I'm liking that option just because, you know, world class, you loop, you loophole it. And if you're more than like, I want to be more than real good. I want to be the best at one thing. I don't know what that one particular thing is, but it's going to make me lots of money. And yeah, you're Hendrix, man. You're the best. Dude, I'm the best. I'm making all kinds and I'm happy with that. I'll have people drive me around. I'll have people cook for me. I'll have people clean. I'm okay with that. (laughs) All right. Yeah, I'm going to have to go that down that road too. It, it's, yeah, you can still have a lot of fame and fortune. You can have your bases covered with by hiring people to help take care of you. And you can still have fun playing sports and stuff too. Like, even though you're the suckiest guy, like, you have no, fun not with me. it. Like, That's the part. It's sports that would do it for me. Because of sports, I choose option B. 
No, I just unless just I'm choosing to, to be a world class golfer, maybe. No, it's not just about fun. You know what's fun? Winning. So choose one particular <laughs> thing that you're good at and excel at it. Be the yeah, best but then I couldn't play softball or that. I, I like being good play. at a lot of things. I like trying to be good at a lot of things anyway. No, I. Dude, if you come in like 50th place in a golf tournament, you're making like 30 G's still, no? Well, it depends which golf tournament, but yeah, you can make a lot of money. Dude, play golf for 10 years and come in first every time. Yeah. Tiger Woods. He was really bad at everything else. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I still choose. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather be like like decent at everything. I'd rather be rich. See, like, I, I feel like, like I'm halfway competent in a lot of things, and it's led me to here talking to you two bozos. So Exactly. Uh, like, yeah, I'm gonna be, I'd, I'd choose excellency at one thing. That's it. We we all have like I can see you too, James. Like, you know us. We played sports our whole lives. You two, basketball, football, even soccer, uh, baseball, hockey. So like we all have a pretty, you know. There's some sports I'm better at than others, but I'm looking at it all and saying, hey, eh, you know, if I don't play this again, or not that I even don't have to play it, but just not to be good at it. Okay, whatever. Versus. Yeah, but your whole life, you never, you're, you're thinking of it now where you're looking back and you're like, I had that and I'm good with my memories. You don't get the memories, dude. You were never good at that shit. Yeah, I guess. But still to be, to have that kind of security. You're always last picked in school, man. You were the weird kid who was good at guitar. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think you're thinking it through. I don't know. Now you're kind of changing it. but I'm not changing it at all. I'm you're just thinking you the think about the whole thing. To get well, but likely, unless like you're, you're choosing like, uh, it depends what your thing is. That's why it's easier if you if you put your your peg on something, because then we can say like, hey, fine, you're the best guitar player, but you probably don't get bras until college. Or guys, Corey, I'm you know we're a non we we don't judge on this show. I'm just saying either way. <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, whatever, man. You, but you know what I'm saying, like. So if but if your thing was like football, then yeah, you probably would be you probably would have been popular in high school too. Look, looking back on it now, like being in a bit of an older adult, I think I'd go with that option. Just uh, the being good at one thing and you know trying to have fun at others, and just you know, again, it's all about the money right now. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. There's no bad choice, and that's why you podcast. Oh yeah, I get the big bucks over here. Still waiting on that smoked meat. When are we taking Carlos out? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm on five beers, guys. I don't think we told Carlos his new nickname is C3, C3P Bro. And the new, and the, I've always thought of this in my head that the name of his band would be Carlos Candido and the Banditos or something like that. It's got to have Banditos in there because he is a Bandito. Five beers in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. It took a while. Come it on. Took a, it took a while for the unspeakably bad one. to come out. I've been thinking about that one for a while. Oh, no. Don't say that. You're making it. Take a shovel away. I just never said it. That's all. <laughs> Candido and the Banditos. No, now it's good. Now that you say it again, now, that, now I like it. <laughs> Thanks, James. <laughs> it's still not doing much for me, to be honest. All right. Let's let the good people get on with their weekends here. Put a plug in it. Uh, so, anyway, hope you enjoyed this. It was uh, You got a bonus episode with James. And uh, James now rides off to his... Uh, we'll just loosely call it retirement because I don't know what else to call it. Yeah, well, sabbatical? Hiatus. Call it sabbatical. That's a better term. Retirement sounds yeah. too final. I, no, I, I really do hope to be guys. back doing this like on a regular basis with you guys in a few months. I, I think uh, I'll be able to bad. figure it out. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. You should just jump in on a call every now and again and just be like, hey, guys. At random, I might show up. I might just buzz in. <laughs> and do, Although you if must, ever I do, you don't update sure me either. Just let me try to figure it out. You just have to make sure you're, you're recording before you jump in. Oh, yeah, that's true. Otherwise, there'll be this weird pause in the show, but we won't hear you. Well, no, I know. To start, I'll just start recording <laughs> that night randomly at, like, 9.48 when you guys start. And then... I'll jump on at ten thirty, and I'll have I'll have perfectly time tracked for you. 
<laughs> you should you should just jump on and be like, "Fuck you, fuckers." <laughs> That would be like, that would be you, buddy. That? I'll just jump in with some random, like, terrible joke. Yeah, we need where are our dad jokes. What's gonna happen there? You know, you know why golfers wear two pairs of pants? Oh no! In case they get a hole in one. I knew it had something to do with a hole. <laughs> Say goodbye, what? James. Goodbye, if you, James. If you, goodbye. If you would have given me five more seconds, I would have got that one. That's why I didn't. Oh my god. Okay. That's it. Let's get out of here. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> Corey, uh, wh- where are you? Where are you at on Twitter? I've got a Y'all headache find now. Find me at Chop Rules with a Z. I'd be happy to hear from you. And James, are you still going to be ad- addressing your your Twitter account? I I don't know how I'm going to handle uh, the heavy flow of mail that I get, but uh, yeah, I'll still be managing it. At Tommy Bombadil one with a Z. Yes, you did it. Thank you so much, James. I love you, bro. I knew I was going to do that from when we started tonight. I wrote it down. I was like, I'm going to end my thing with with a Z. It's fucking fucking right. That makes I'm smiling ear to ear. (laughs) That's that's the beer talking. Yep, but no, it's not necessarily because people don't know necessarily what goes on behind the scenes here, peek behind the curtain at the tumbling saber, but. We have some pretty heated conversations about the Z. 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 Fuck you. Fuck this. Fuck that. Okay, everybody. Thanks a lot for listening. We're out of here. Um, episode 89. Or 88, is it? 88. It's coming up in a couple days. Stick around for that. And uh, be sure to visit StarWarsCommonwealth.com over the weekend. Check out our podcasting partners and... Uh, Fill up your weekend with some podcasting goodness. We'll talk to you later. Thank you for listening to the Sith Disturbers podcast. Brought to you by the Warped Minds at the Tumbling Saber. Proud member of the Star Wars Commonwealth Network. Visit StarWarsCommonwealth.com and take your first step into a larger world. You want to hear a joke about a pad of paper? It's terrible. (laughs) I love it. Don't worry, Corey. You'll get it tomorrow.